Most people run into calculus when they're freshmen in college. For some reason, colleges use calculus as a weeder class. It's sort of like how girls have certain little tests guys must pass to get to first base. Isn't that frustrating? There you are feeling great about being accepted and thinking you'll be able to do it. Then suddenly you have to prove yourself all over again. I'll tell you a secret. It's easy once you think about it correctly. Calculus is a trick to divide by zero. Okay, the picky math types might argue. But we don't want to argue, we just want to get it. So the easiest way to get it is to look at calculus as a trick to divide by zero. Got it? Now let's get some more. Calculus is like other mathematical operations. Just like subtraction is the opposite of addition and division is the opposite of multiplication, calculus goes both ways. Now isn't that interesting? One side of calculus is differential calculus. The other is integral calculus. Integral calculus is the easiest to understand. That's why colleges teach it second. See what I mean about those little tests to see how far you'll get? But don't worry, we'll go all the way. So what is integral calculus? Integral calculus is a way to calculate the area under a curve. <laughs> Measuring rectangles are easy. Simply multiply the width by the height. But for curves, you need integral calculus. Maybe it will help to look at some curves. See, that is a curve. This is the area under a curve. We only measure the area to a straight line. Beneath that could be other curves. But those are off limits, for now. We could try to measure this area using rectangles, but you notice that it misses all these bits. You don't want to lose any of these, do you? If we use smaller rectangles, we get more of what we want. So if we use smaller and smaller rectangles, they eventually are zero width. This is what I meant by saying it is a trick to divide by zero. See, you fill in the whole area. When we add up the areas of all the zero width pieces, we integrate the pieces. And that is the area under the curve. When you integrate, you get the sum of the areas. That is why this symbol for integration looks like an S. It's how you get sums. See, calculus is fun. I'll give you a chance to appreciate what you just learned about integral calculus. Okay, now are you ready for more? The opposite of integral calculus is differential calculus. Guess what differential calculus is about? Differences. You can tell the difference between things, right? I told you that integral calculus is easy to understand. Well, differential calculus is easier to do. Sort of like girls, huh? There are only six formulas. You can count to six without even using two hands. So differential calculus is about differences. Specifically, when one thing changes, how another thing changes. We call that the rate of change. This chart shows all the values of f based on the range of u. F is what we call a function. Starting at zero, as u gets bigger, f increases. That's a positive rate of change. We can see that f increases until u gets to be this big. Then f stops increasing and that starts decreasing. That's a negative rate of change. Let's look at a real life example. What can we use demonstrates rate of change? Hmm, I know, gravity. Isaac Newton created calculus to be able to figure out gravity. He needed a way to track heavenly bodies moving in space. Following Newton's example, let's us look at a body moving in space. This isn't mindless misogynistic fun. Let's scrap the motion over time. If we start here and move this direction this much, it goes up this much. 
If we continue to move this direction, the same amount, it goes up. Then at this point, it starts slowing down until we get to this point when it stops going up. The rate of change is zero. Now if we keep moving this direction, the curve starts going down. In a nutshell, that's calculus. To get all the formulas, go to our website, www.howtodogirls.com. Thank mm -hmm. you.